Hello friends and welcome to my crafty space. My name is Crystal Idunyate and today I am so excited to be here sharing my plans for October Daily 2022. I have just finished up doing all of my video editing and photography and all of that on my October Daily 2021. And let me tell you how much of a joy that was to go back and revisit my album from last year. I am a finish it kind of girl, so I usually have my albums done within a week after the month ends. This year, I'm going to be working on an October daily where I will be doing some daily storytelling. My plan is to uh, mix in some creative writing prompts, which are always some of my most favorites, along with some everyday storytelling and events and all of that kind of fun stuff. So you're going to see a mix of stories this year. I have created a list of 13 perilous prompts for you to use if you are also interested in adding some more creative writing into your albums this year. What do I mean by creative writing? When I say creative writing, I mean uh, taking a prompt that is maybe not necessarily based on something that happened that day, but more so a reflective kind of storytelling with a quirky twist on it. An example of this could be something like, you know, pick your favorite Disney villain and write them a letter. That is what I mean by creative writing. It gives you an opportunity to reveal pieces of yourself in your story, but in a really fun and creative way. So I have a list of 13 prompts that I will include a link to in my description down below. I have also shared it over on my Instagram account so you can catch it there as well. And it's on my blog. So lots of places where you can find those prompts if you're looking for some fun and different kinds of stories to tell this year. Now let's talk about how I'm planning to do my project this year. What am I going to actually make my album in this year? In the years past, I have created my October dailies using traditional scrapbooking albums. In 2018, 2019, and 2020, I used four by four albums that had the one and a half inch spine. For 2020, I ended up having to spread into three of those albums because I found that the spine was not large enough to contain the types of pages that I like to create, which tend to have a lot of interactivity to them. In 2021, last year, I used a life crafted Clementine colored album. This was in the traditional size or the original size, which is roughly five by eight and a quarter. And once again, I did have to expand into three volumes of that album because the spine again is that one and a half inch and I found it to be a little too small. This year, my plan is to DIY my very own album and it's going to be something pretty different. Instead of using a traditional album or creating a traditional album, I'm actually going to be using vintage children's Halloween books to create covers and spiral bind my entire album together. I do have an example of one of them. I have purchased two books that are the same size and I'm going to spiral bind both of them the same way. This is a process that I show how to do, but it is inside of the stories of this season course through Allie Edwards, which I will link in the description down below. If you're looking for the tutorial on how to make these and then also some additional pages from me and five other designers as well. So um, my album is going to be inside of books that look like this this year. Now, as I'm working through them, I'm not actually going to add the pages or bind the books together until the very end. That way I can make sure that I've got everything I need. If I have to go and find one more of these books, I might have to do that, but I'm hoping to just create my album in two by keeping things a little flatter this year. Besides the albums that I'm going to be using, these vintage Halloween books, I am also going to be using the Allie Edwards 2022 Halloween collection. My products that I still have from my previous year's stash. And then I also have created, with the help of my sister-in-law and a mutual friend, our very own Halloween collection for this year. 
I have not revealed the collection yet and that's actually going to be happening tomorrow. So tomorrow, come back to my channel and see the full reveal of Frankie's Halloween. I can't wait to share it with you and that's going to be a big part of what I'm using this year. So let me go ahead and uh, turn you on to the table view here so I can just briefly show you what I've got left from last year that I will be using and then um, I will also leave a link to the Halloween collection from Allie Edwards since that's also going to be a large part of my products this year. So let's turn over to the desk view and go through some of the products that you might see coming up in my October daily this year. Hey friends, pausing the video really quick because I realized that I forgot to talk about where my October daily content is going to be located for my 2022 project. So this year, similar to last year, I am going to be completing my October daily pages live over in my Patreon, which is always linked in my video descriptions. Those videos are going to be taking place on Mondays through Thursdays, starting at 1 p.m. Eastern time until I finish between 2 and 3 p.m. So I intend to be live for roughly one to two hours each of those four days of the week. Then once my videos are done, I will be downloading the content, editing, editing the content, and then reposting it to my YouTube channel with a voiceover. However, I'm only going to be sharing the first half of my album this year. And then the second half I will save and share just like I did this year during the month of September leading up to October. That is mostly because it takes a lot of time to go back and edit videos and voice them over and do all of the back end stuff. And while I'm doing October daily, I'm also going to be getting ready for December daily and living life. So I don't want to overwhelm myself by trying to do all of the videos before the month of October ends. So that's going to be my plan. You can see the entire album for 2022 come together over on my Patreon in those live videos, or you can see the first half of it come together here on YouTube in the month of October, 2022. And then you'll see the second half and my flip through in September of 2023. All right, let's get back to the video so I can show you what I'm going to be using this year for my supplies. Okay, so here we are starting off with my two albums. So I chose two of these books that are by the weekly reader books. And these are from, I believe the publishing date was sometime in the 1960s. So these are quite old and I loved them because when you open them up, they actually have a full scene along the back and the front of the album. And I think that they are just so, so cool. I definitely wanna go on the hunt for some more of these. So I have The Ghost of Windy Hill and The Haunted Cove, and these are going to be the two notebooks that I will be creating this year, unless for whatever reason I need to spread into three, and therefore I should probably go and find one more of these just in case. So next let's talk about the papers that I will be pulling from this year. I do have three pattern papers that will be included in Frankie's Halloween kit, which will be revealed tomorrow. So those will go in the with the rest of my supplies here. I have a ton of scraps from all of the years I have done this project. Some that date back to the crepe paper uh, hey Boo, I think is what it was called, or Hey Pumpkin, I think was the name of the line. I've got a couple of those papers left. I've got some from Heidi Swap's collection from 2021. She did a Halloween kit last year, so I have a couple of those papers left in here. And then some random other scraps from, real, well, really all over the place. In terms of the papers that I have more of, I do have a couple of transparencies, and I actually have one more underneath all of this. Um, a spiderweb transparency and then a gold star transparency, which I'd like to go pick up some more of this. I believe you can buy that at Joann's. Then for... Um, oh, it actually looks like I have even more. So there's more spider web. This was a piece of um, backing for some stickers at the dollar store that I kept. And then I also have this darker constellation 
transparency as well. So that I will throw in with my supplies. For my larger papers, I have two or three different sets of them. Some of them came from some older collections. This one's the Midnight Haunting from Pebbles. This one is that Hey Pumpkin line. And then last year, the main kit that I used to create all of my stories was A Little Scary, which is by, um, oh gosh, who are you by? It's A Little Scary by, it'll come to me, the name of the company. Oh, Fancy Pants. That's what it is. So it's a little scary by Fancy Pants. And I have a ton of the papers left. So I've got the little owls here, which is super cute. The cable knit sweater, the pendant banners, my ultimate favorite, the uh, white with black stars. And then I have a paper collection that I purchased last year, but I actually didn't use any of it or hardly any of it. And the collection is called, um, oh, what are you called? So the collection is by the Haunted Marketplace. Is that what they are all called or is that just the name of the paper? No, it's just the name of the paper. Oh, Spellbound. That's the name of this one. So this collection is called Spellbound and it is by the Fairy Tale Club. So this one has a lot of more retro feeling colors and I think that it's just super cute. I used this one paper last year, which has the cat pumpkins on the back, but I really love the stripe. And the artwork in it is just super cute. It's really kind of original feeling and I love that. There's this huge haunted house, which I will definitely not cut up. and I'm going to frame this instead. So polka dots on the back. These are kind of like cut aparts that you can use, but I really love the buffalo check. There's some witches hats. And the back side of this one is the word boo, which I love the boo. We've got some black cats here with these spirals on the back. Love this side. These cute little pumpkins. And the back of that are these amazing frames. It's just a super cute retro feeling Halloween kit. This is one through 31. And then on the back of this are orange with black bats. So these papers you're going to definitely see coming into my October daily this year because I have so many of them and I really would like to get them used. And then you're also going to see a couple more papers from Frankie's Halloween collection, which you'll see more of that tomorrow. So those are my papers. I also have some cards that I have left in my stash from years past. So for these, I have some of them are from the um, paper person Halloween collection last year. Some are from some cut aparts that I just got years and years ago. Some of them, like this one I believe was from Coco Daisy's collection last year. Some are from the crepe paper. Um, like this one I believe was also the Coco Daisy collection. Just wherever I can find them, I collect them. This is from a couple years ago when I used the Halloween market from mm, Cardabella was that one. Some are from Allie Edwards. So wherever I can find the cards, I will add them into this collection. Now this year, I will be adding in the October Stories by the Month kit from Allie Edwards. There are a couple pieces in there that I think are awesome for this project. And I will also have the Halloween kit from Allie Edwards for 2022, along with all of the digitals that are releasing in the Stories of This Season class. There are six digital kits that come with that class, so I will definitely be using those. I also have a collection of stamps that I'm going to be using this year. So for the larger stamps, I have all things spooky and scary from Studio Calico. I have the Halloween besties Zoe, who's wearing this cute little bee costume or butterfly costume, and she has a cat with a butterfly costume. Super cute. These are close to my heart, as is this one, which is Lucy, who's dressed up as a kitty cat. And I also have the pumpkin treats because along with October Daily comes a lot of pumpkin spiced everything. So this one will definitely make its appearance. For my three by four stamp sets, I have 
from 2018 all the way up to 2022 of the October Stories by the Month stamps. You'll, you'll definitely see those, like here's two of them, 2018, 2019. So I will likely also use 2020, 2021, and 2022. This is the Coco Daisy Halloween stamp from the collection last year, which I also super love that in the style of all those little drawings. And then I also have the Paper Person 2021 Halloween stamp as well, which was included in their Halloween mini kit. So those are my Halloween stamps. I don't have a super big collection of Halloween stamps. I'd actually like to build my collection of them, but for now, these are what I have and definitely what you will see me using. Along the same lines of the paper products, I have a cut file that I cut out last year and I never used it, but this will definitely come in handy this year. And then I have a small collection of treat bags, which I love to find uses for inside of my album. So I typically put in the oranges, black and white, and then um, some that have some Halloween type sentiments or faces or, you know, styles to them. And some that are just striped because stripes and chevrons definitely fit in very nicely with the Halloween theme. I have a small collection of ephemera pieces left over from years past. So I will definitely be bringing this out to see what all I have from the past that I can definitely add in this year as well. And then I will be printing out some digital components. This one is from some uh, stories by the month and then also from a integrative bubble collection from last year or the year before. So these I will trim out and turn into die cuts as well. In addition to the papers and journaling cards in Frankie's Halloween collection, there's also a set of ephemera pieces. So those will be included in amongst my ephemera and you'll see more of those tomorrow as well. Along with the papers that I had purchased from the Spellbound collection, I also have the ephemera pack that came with it and the glitter foam stickers. I'm not 100% sure yet if I'm going to use the glitter foam stickers just because of how dimensional they are, so I might save those for another time, but I definitely will be using the ephemera pack. Then let's talk about some of the more dimensional stuff that I have here in my stash from years past. I'm a huge fan of adding in lots of different textures. So I've got some metal, some chipboard, I've got puffy stickers in here, paper clips, little tokens that I can add on with some twine, all kinds of things in here. And then I also have a second set where I've got um, some bows. I've got these really cool gold frames that I probably won't use this time because they're so thick, but also some felt embellishments, acrylic, wood veneer and more. So these come from a variety of places. Some are from Tim Holtz, some are from the Coco Daisy or the Ali Edwards story types of kits. Some are from uh, color cast designs. So a lot of my acrylic and wood veneer are from there. The felt pieces came from the dollar store. This bow was a children's bow that I ripped off the uh, clip part on it. So just wherever I can find them, I get them. I do have some of the Halloween lights from Tim Holtz that I purchased when they were on sale, but I haven't used them yet. So maybe this will be the year for those. Along the lines of the dimensional products, and I do want to quickly apologize for my lighting. I think a thunderstorm is pulling in. So I'm gonna see if I can finish this up before it gets here and uh, we're interrupted. I have a collection of old buttons that I like to keep and use within my October dailies. So I've collected those throughout the years and just hold on to them. I have a few more acrylic pieces and wood veneer pieces, some for my Dia de los Muertos album and some that just go for my October daily. This is Ellie's studio and these are color cast design. These are actually charms that my daughter and I made um, using shrink, like shrink material. So I'm going to see if I can get some of these on my album this year just because they're so darn cute and we made them ourselves. I love going and shopping the Tim Holtz collections and just collecting pieces throughout the years. I have the frames uh, which were baseboards, I believe is what he calls them in his shop. 
some really old uh, chipboard phrases that I've just been using throughout the last four years. This is new and I don't think I got into it last year, but it has some like word phrase stickers in it and some other different kinds of stickers. So we'll see if I pull these out. This is the Curiosities sticker book. And then I also have Tim's um, transparent elements. So this comes with butterflies, it has a spider web, um, an eye chart, and then the skeleton diagram, which I used in my album last year. So you probably will have already seen that if you've seen my flip throughs. So that's my Tim Holtz stash that I still have remaining. I also have a ton of washi tapes um, and trims because I love adding in all the different trims. We've got some lace, we've got some mummy trim. I've got different ribbons here, different twines that I can use. I will also add in my black and white to this twine collection. And I love creating shaker pockets with my Halloween stuff. So I have these sprinklets that I've had for years. I also have some of the jars from Target. So I've got bats, moons, stars, and then the two colors of glitter, and then some other sequins. So purple sequins, lime green sequins, and then the gold and silver star sequins. Those definitely make their appearance and likely will this year again. And then last but not least, I also have a few sticker sheets left. These I purchased new from uh, Studio Calico when they were on sale. So these are pink, orange, and black tiny phrase stickers. I've got some enamel dots and these sparkly dots from years past to use. I've got some stickers left over from my Pip Sticks sticker advent last year. So we've got some like zigzag shapes. These are those tiny little um, postage stamps, some border strips, some alphas. We've got spider webs, frames that are really cute, bats and ghosts. So we'll see if I use any of those this year. I have a couple leftover tiny fray stickers from Heidi Swap. I have just a few stickers left from my Hey Pumpkin uh, sticker sheets. And then these were also Heidi Swap the puffy sticker sheet from that collection. So that's really what I've got left over from my supplies last year. In addition to all of the things I've showed you today, I'm also going to be, going to be using the 2022 Halloween kit from Allie Edwards, the digital kits from the Stories of This Season class, um, and Frankie's Halloween collection, which I will be revealing tomorrow and it will be available for purchase in my Etsy shop. So come back tomorrow because I am most excited to share this new collection with you. I can't wait to see what you think. Until next time, friends, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Tell me in the comments below what you're planning to use for your October daily this year, if you're making an October daily, and what kind of album you are going to be creating in. Until next time, I will see you later. Bye, friends.